What's going on summoners? Welcome back to another Wild Rift video. I'm Kangas and today I'm talking about the best Dragon Lane synergies on the Wild Rift. These picks won't instantly win you the game when you lock them in, but their level of synergy is impressive and they're all far better together than with other champions. So let's get into it. First up on our list, we have Misfortune paired with Seraphine. The Gunslinging Pirate and Popstar synergize really well, and there's a few interesting ways that their abilities combine together to make them far more than the sum of their parts. Firstly, both of them are just super obnoxious to lane against. Misfortune has some of the best early game trading around, with Double Up and Make It Rain both being potent harass tools. When combined with the Burst of Love Tap, Misfortune is unrivaled in short trades. Seraphine's high note and beat drop boast generous hitboxes and long range, so she lays down the poke too. Her passive stage presence also helps her dish out the damage at an insanely long range. The first big synergy between their kits lies in Seraphine's third ability, Beat Drop. She fires out a wave, dealing damage and slowing enemies. But if they're already slowed, they're rooted instead. And if they're already rooted, they get stunned. This skill is already pretty good in isolation, but when combined with Misfortune's Make It Rain for the slow, it's deadly. Seraphine can fire Beat Drop out, and then Misfortune can place Make It Rain just before it hits, turning the ability into a devastating root. And if Seraphine double cast Beat Drop, she just stuns them straight up. It's brutal crowd control, and it's on their basic abilities. Seraphine and Misfortune also both have huge AoE team fighting ultimates, and they combine together very well. Seraphine can lead with Encore to keep enemies in place for bullet time, and can extend the CC by laying Beat Drop on top of Misfortune's already placed Make It Rain. Bullet time deals an insane amount of damage if enemies stand in it for the full duration, and Seraphine can make sure that the enemies are locked up the entire time. Misfortune and Seraphine perform extremely well at all stages of the game. Strong laning, strong team fighting, and abilities that enable each other turn these otherwise decent champions into a deadly combo. Make sure to try this one out if you haven't already. Before we continue, I just want to plug our Discord one more time. Check it out in the link in the description down below. We got tons of people in the community that will play games with you, talk esports, talk the game, talk meta, talk anything you want to talk about with Wild Rift. Go make some friends and have some fun. The next dragon lane combo that we have is Yasuo and Malphite. While Yasuo is more suited to the mid lane, with the right support, he's definitely a potent dragon laner and he should not be underestimated. Yasuo dishes out devastating crits if he's set up for success, and his wind wall can be impossible to deal with for some marksmen. The second part of this lane is crucial too. In Emerald and below, Malphite is very powerful. His harass with Seismic Shard is hard to sustain through and near impossible to avoid, and Unstoppable Force's AoE knockup is incredible for enabling Yasuo. In higher elos, you can also use Gragas as a support, as his explosive cast is slightly harder to outplay and far less committal. Alistair also works excellent, as you can use the last breath after Alistair's headbutt, and then you can follow with Pulverize and the rest of your crowd control. All of these Yasuo lanes, and especially the Malphite pairing, don't have much threat in the early stages of the lane. Once level 3 is reached and both champions have all their abilities, their threat is greatly increased as they can engage easily onto the enemy dragon lane. This combo is far more powerful against immobile marksmen like Jinx and Ash, as they don't really have the tools to avoid the knockup into crowd control chain, and will just get one shot and die. Yasuo's scaling is also immense, and when he has a champion dedicated to enabling him further, he's in a great position to take over entire games. As we already know, Yasuo is particularly tricky to pilot, but having free knockups makes it way easier to find engages. Yasuo Malphite and other Yasuo lanes can often be very powerful. When picked against teams with low mobility, the combo will be devastating. Yasuo lanes are a great change of place from the usual dragon lanes, and you should give it a whirl if you haven't already. Before we check out the rest of the video, our question of the day is, what champion is the most satisfying to play? Wombo combos are always great to watch, and landing big ults on champions like Amumu or Orianna are always super satisfying. My personal favorite is Malphite. Let me know yours in the comments down below. The third Baron lane combination we got is Jin alongside Lux. If you're familiar with League of Legends, this is basically a budget Caitlyn Lux lane. To explain that a little further, Lux is great at setting up champions with high bursts that can follow up on her light binding. Jin can lay down deadly flourish to extend the crowd control and follow up with the rest of his kit for easy kills. Jin and Lux, similar to Misfortune and Seraphine, are also both incredibly obnoxious in lane. Jin's bouncing grenade and four shot are dangerous trading tools, and if the enemy isn't careful, they'll find their health bar slowly being chipped away. Lux can also keep out of the range of the enemy dragon laners while whittling down their health bars with Lucent Singularity and a few auto attacks. 
Once the enemy champions are slightly chunked, this is when the combo comes into play. Lux will throw out light bindings until one finally connects, and Jin will follow up with deadly flourish. Both champions unload their burst, and in the unlikely event that the enemy survives, Jin can follow up with the curtain call and begin sniping them from range. Lux can also snipe people with her final spark, which makes it even more difficult for anyone to actually escape this dragon lane combo. If you're a fan of Jin and haven't played with Lux yet, try it out. Make sure to play extremely aggressively during the laning phase, and I'm sure you'll find yourself with some duo kills. The next dragon lane that we have for you all features one of the hardest champions in the game that isn't performing particularly well. It gives them a support that shores up most of their weaknesses, and this creates a beautiful synergy that can outplay even the most fed of foes. Vayne and Lulu are a late game powerhouse combo that can carry any game if they get out of lane unscathed. Vayne has a terrible early game, and Lulu isn't particularly good at that either. Lulu's help picks helps Vayne farm some minions and not get poked down too much, but otherwise it's pretty brutal for the duo. But once the lane phase is over, this duo can truly begin to shine. Vayne has incredible damage output from Silver Bolts and limitless outplay potential with the invisibility granted to her by final hour. She's slippery, hard to lock down, and will kill both your tanks and your carries in a mere few seconds. And when Lulu is behind her, Vayne is at her most powerful. All of Lulu's abilities enhance Vayne in a way that's incredibly useful. Glitter Lance, when combined with help picks, helps Vayne's already potent chase potential become truly inescapable. The slow can be invaluable when trying to catch out enemy carries or disengage from the enemy frontline. When Vayne receives Whimsy, she's just impossible to hit. She moves so fast that she can effortlessly dodge every skill shot, and her increased attack speed makes her damage output even more terrifying. Help Picks also helps keep Vayne healthy, and the bolts from Picks synergize extremely well with Vayne's high attack speed builds. Lastly, Wild Growth makes Vayne even harder to kill, keeping her safe from incoming threats and interrupting any dashes heading her way. We haven't shied away from the fact that Vayne is pretty sucky at the moment, but Lulu is the one champion that makes her extremely powerful. If the game isn't over by the time that you finish your first item, you're in a great position to carry the game. And it's also just pretty fun to play. Just good luck getting out of the laning phase. Hope you find some victories with this otherwise underpowered champion. Next up in the dragon lane, we have Kaisa and Alistair. The Void Marksman has tools for almost every single situation, whether that's dealing with frightening enemy assassins, melting through tanks, or destroying enemy carries, Kai'Sa can do it all. Kai'Sa doesn't possess the raw early game power of other marksmen like Draven or Misfortune, but she makes up for it with versatility outside of the lane phase. If you can land Void Seeker, her burst in lane is still pretty potent, and Alistair's headbutt pulverized combo is incredible setup for it. Kai'Sa's passive, Second Skin, also gets stacked up by CC, and Alistair has that in spades. These two champions truly take off once the lane phase ends and the team fights become more common. With Kaisa Alistair, you want to play fights extremely aggressively. Alistair can peel enemy threats away so Kaisa can safely DPS, but ultimately, that's not necessarily the way you want to be playing fights. Alistair should be looking for enemy carries as soon as he can spot them, comboing them and setting them up for Kaisa. She can fly in with Killer Instinct, gunning them down with the Cathian Rain, and then escape with Supercharge. Kaisa with Alistair is a great dragon lane combo to round out team compositions with heavy dive and engage. If you're going forward, these champions are great and I'd highly recommend this lane. Yeah, we love this champion so much we're giving you two Jin lanes this time around, but this time the support is a little different. Jin and Nami work extremely well together, but it's mostly because of how incredibly good Tidecaller's blessing is on Jin. Nami has a very strong laning phase, and Ebb and Flow keeps her opponents poked out while she stays topped up. She can cast Tidecaller's Blessing on herself or Jin to slow the enemy and set up her bubble, which can easily be followed up with Deadly Flourish and the rest of their burst. Where this combo truly shines is when Jin gets access to Curtain Call. Nami's Tidecaller's Blessing empowers an ally for a short duration, giving extra magic damage and a slow to their next three abilities or attacks. This extra damage applies on each bullet of Curtain Call, making them a devastating barrage. It's also a good thing that the damage is loaded onto the first three shots, as Jin's fourth shot is an execute, and all that extra damage will make it even more brutal. Jin's ability to navigate teamfights also relies heavily on how fast he moves, so he really appreciates the extra movement speed from Surging Tides. He also doesn't have any sustain in his kit and tends to delay lifesteal items in his build, so Nami's heals are also invaluable. Jin and Nami work particularly well together, and if you haven't already played this lane, you should definitely try it out. The last Dragon Lane synergy we have for you includes two of my personal favorite champions, Ash and Braum. This Freyordian duo is particularly potent at rounding out team compositions that lack crowd control and utility, and are great at playing a supportive role for the team, or even taking the charge and leading your team to victory. 
Braum has boatloads of CC, and wins basically every fight where he's allowed to get his passive to proc. His Winter's Bite can sometimes be difficult to land, and often he'll find himself getting slowly poked out of lane if he can't find any all-ins. This is where Ash comes in. She's extremely strong in the early lane phase, and volley trades can single-handedly carry the first few levels. The slows that Ash dishes out is also super helpful for Braum, making it way easier for him to tag people with Winter's Bite so that Ash can proc his passive. Once Ash and Braum unlock their ultimates, they become even scarier. Ash can lead with Enchanted Crystal Arrow to guarantee Glacial Fissure, which in turn guarantees Winter's Bite, which leads to Braum's passive proc. <laughs> and from there on out, Ash just continues the slows. This dragon lane has more than enough crowd control for both teams and is an excellent pickup if you need to take a backseat and help your damage dealers in other lanes play out the game. So, whether you're queuing up for your next ranked games or just messing around with your buddies, you should try out some of these dragon lane combos. Picking champions with strong synergy can be extremely fun and also just makes them way better than if they're paired with other champions. Thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure to answer our question of the day in the comments down below. Also, like the video if you enjoyed the content, sub to the channel, check out our Discord in the description, and as always, best of luck on the Rift. Stay hydrated, and I'll see you next time.